Hi everyone. Okay, in this a series of video clips on this chapter 4 on inequalities and system of linear equations, there's a total of 8 video clips. In the first 5 video clips, I'll be focusing on inequalities, whereas the last 3 video clips, I'll be focusing on a system of linear equations. Now in this first video clip, I'll be going through the solving of inequalities, but it's only restricted to those type of problems not with the use of the modulus function. Okay, so in the first part, I'll be going through the, some properties of inequalities to refresh your memory of how we can actually apply the laws of inequalities. And in the second part of this video clip, I'll be going through four examples to solve the problems of inequalities using some of these laws. Now in the first property of inequality, it says that if x is less than y, then we can say that x plus z will be smaller than y plus z. So that means you can add both sides of inequality by a number, same number, it will not affect the inequality sign. Okay? Likewise, if you are going to find the difference by subtracting z from x, the inequality sign will also not change. So this law is very useful. That means whenever you want to make the right hand side zero of an inequality, you can just subtract both sides by the entire y value. So, so in other words, a special case will be you subtract y on both sides, you get x minus y less than zero. Okay? That is the first property. In the second property, it says that if x is less than y, then x multiplied by z will be less than y multiplied by z if z is a positive number. So if z is a positive number, we can actually multiply both sides of the inequality by z. Okay? And that will not affect the inequality sign. Okay? So in other words, for example, like say x is less than say 3x minus 2. We can say, oh, let's multiply both sides by x squared plus 1. It will not affect the inequality sign because x squared plus 1 is always positive. Okay? And also, besides this, we can say that x times z will become greater than y times z if z is less than 0. Okay. In other words, if I have x less than 3x minus 2, if you can multiply both sides by say minus of x squared plus 1 on both sides, multiply this one by minus of x squared plus 1 as well, the inequality sign will change because the minus of x squared plus 1 is going to be negative. So if you multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative number, the inequality sign will change. Okay? How about the third property? The third property says that if x right, is less than y and y is less than z, okay? that means that x will be less than z. Okay? So this is actually sometimes what we call a transitive property. That means if x is smaller than y and y is smaller than z, that means x will be smaller than z. Okay, and then last property, it says that if x is and y are both positive numbers, okay, or both negative numbers, okay, then you can take the reciprocal of x, you take the reciprocal of y, the sign will change, basically. Right? Example, for example, you can think of numerically, 3 is less than 5. If you look at 1 third, and you look at 1 fifth, clearly, this will be greater than this. Right? Okay? Right? But however, it will vi be violated if one of them is a negative number and one of them is a positive number. I'll give you an example, negative 3 is less than 5. You take the reciprocal of this, 
You take a reciprocal of this, okay, the sign still remains unchanged. So you need to ensure that both x and y are positive before you can make use of this property. Okay? Now we'll go through the four examples on the solving of inequalities. Okay? Okay. Now in the first example, we need to solve the inequality that is given by 1 over x plus 2 is greater than 3. Okay. Now we don't multiply both sides of the inequality by x plus 2, reason being that we are not certain actually for any x, right, whether this will always be positive. But rather we can subtract 3 on both sides. the inequality sign will not change. And if you combine them by LCM, this will be greater than 0. And of course, simplifying it, it's minus 3x, minus 6 plus 1, so it's minus 5, over x plus 2 is greater than 0. Right. Multiplying throughout by negative 1 on both sides, we will get 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 because negative 1 of course is a negative number so it will change sign if you multiply with negative 1. Then we can make use of this property called number line to help us to solve this inequality. So we first mark the two points that make each term both the numerator and in this case the denominator 0. So that means x is negative 5 over 3 and x equals to negative 2. Okay, so this is negative 2, negative 5 over 3. Okay. Then you think of substituting a number here that is more than negative 5 over 2, 5 over 3. Suppose you can choose to sub in x equals 0. If you substitute x equals 0 in the numerator, you get 5. You sub x equals 0 in the denominator, you get 2. So the end result is 5 over 2, which is a positive number. So you put a plus sign here to represent that it's a positive number. Okay? Now, in inequalities, just like in sketching our curves, we are basically only interested in the sign, whether it's positive or negative. Okay? So how do we actually know whether this is positive or negative? We actually make use of this very useful property. That is that if the power of each of this factor is odd power, uh, if they are odd power, then the sign will alternate. That means if this is plus, this will be minus, and this will be plus. Okay. If this happens to be minus, then this will be plus, and this will be minus. Okay. Later on, okay, we will look at, in example 3, a situation where one of the term factor is actually an even power, and we will deal with that later on, on that area. So in this case, we have plus, minus, and plus, and we are looking for less than 0 here. If it's less than 0, we are looking at this region from minus 2 to minus 5 over 3. So therefore, my x will be from minus 2 to minus 5 over 3. Mm -hmm. That will be the answer for this question. Let's take a look at the second example. In the second example, we are asked to solve this inequality. In the second example. So notice that in this second example, we are looking at less than or equal to 0. Okay, it includes the equal. And again, since it's already been factorized, we look at all those x values that make each term 0. Okay, one of which is negative 2 third, one of which is 1 quarter, one of which is 1, and one of which is 5. Okay. Now, all this power are all odd power because it's power 1. So we do not have such a problem when we first look at a number that is more than 5. Suppose you choose x to be 10. You substitute x to 10 into each of these terms. You realize this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. However, this is negative. So positive over negative, we will get negative. And because, as I said, all the powers are odd powers, 
If this is negative, this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive, and this will be negative. Okay? So we want less than or equal to zero. But we must be very, very careful here. Because we cannot include x equal one quarter, neither can we include x equal five. Reason is because those values of x will make the denominator zero and hence the entire expression undefined. So you might want to exclude it here by putting an open circle here and open circle here to remind ourselves that we are not considering those values. So we want less than or equal to zero, that means x is less than or equal to negative two thirds. So we're looking at this region. Or between one quarter and one. So you notice that I didn't include one quarter over here. And finally, x is greater than five. Again, I did not include five uh, because those are the values that make the denominator zero. So this will be the answer to example two. Okay? We take a look at example three now. Now in example three, as what I mentioned to you, it has a even power to one of the factor. In a third example, we are asked to solve this inequality. Okay. Now this is of course very similar to example two. I just that I increase the power of 3x plus 2 to 2 and I increase the power for 5 minus x to 3. And everything is similar in terms of uh, the solving method. First, marking the points on the number line, right? So the points are minus 2 third, 1 quarter, 1 and 5. Now do take note this time round that this is an even power and this is an odd power. This is also odd power and this odd power as well. First step, you substitute x to be a number that is more than 5. So if you think of a number x more than 5, say x is 10, what will happen? This is positive, this is positive, this is positive, and this is negative. So you put a minus sign here. Now be very careful at this point here, minus 2 third, because that is the point that corresponds even power. Okay. So this will be plus, this will be minus, this will be plus. Up to here is the same as before. Except that when it's minus two thirds because it's an even power, if this sign to the right of it is plus, then to the left of it will also be plus. If the sign to the right of it is minus, then left of it will also be minus. Okay? So it will be the same sign on both sides of the number when it's an even power. Okay. So now again, be very, very careful about ignoring one quarter and ignoring five because those are the values that make the denominator zero. So what are we looking at? We are looking at numbers that is, the values are x such that the entire expression is greater or equal to zero. Greater than zero will be this region, this region, and this region equal to zero will include this point, right? This point, right? As well. Of course, remember, we are excluding these two points. So the final answer will be x less than one quarter that will cover everything here, okay? Or this one here, which is one less than equal x less than five, okay? And that's the end of this example. So this will be the solution to this question. Okay. And let's take a look at the final example for this video segment. That is to solve this inequality, x minus 2 cubed, x squared plus 1 over x minus 1 squared and 3 minus x less than 0. Now to solve this inequality, Take note that this one is always positive. x squared plus 1 is always positive. So actually, I can divide both sides of the inequality by this positive number. It will not affect the inequality sign. So we will obtain x minus 2 cubed over x minus 1 
square and 3 minus x less than 0. Then we can go on to use the number line approach by putting the values 1, 2 and 3. Those are the values that make each term 0. Okay? Do be very careful about the even power term here, which is x minus 1. So we choose a number that is more than 3, say x is 10. You put inside here, it's positive, positive and negative here. So I put a minus here. Okay? Now the sign will alternate itself, but very careful at the point 1, which is an even power. So if this is minus, this is plus, this is minus, this must be minus, following the same. Okay? And also, what we are looking for is less than 0. So we are looking at this part here, this part here, and this part here. Okay? Right? We are not including all these points which makes it 0. So we have x less than 1, or 1 to 2, or x greater than 3. Okay, the other way of doing it is to combine them together by saying x less than 2 or x greater than 3 but you must tell them that you are excluding the value of 1 from this interval. Okay? And I hope these four examples will actually give you a better idea about how to solve inequalities using number line. Okay? Thank you.